asking and answering questions. Why are there so many English Bible versions? What do all these English Bible versions have to do with the coming mark of the beast? 2 Corinthians 2.17 Matthew 24 9 and 10 Asking Why are there so many English Bible versions? Answer As the scriptures say in 2 Corinthians 2.17 For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God but as of sincerity but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. And again, it is written in Galatians 2 and 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. The corruptions in the word of God have come from Greek philosophers, Acts 17, 18, who took the traditions of men and the principles of the world to teach and preach another Jesus with another gospel and another spirit. 2 Corinthians 11 4. So instead of Jesus, who is written in the Holy Scriptures that were committed to the Jews, Romans 3, 1 and 2, as the Son of God in Acts 3.13 and Acts 3.26, Jesus is written in the Greek philosophers' word of God corruptions in those same passages as the servant of God. Instead of the born again saints written in the scriptures which were committed to the Jews as are saved in 1 Corinthians 1.18, the born again saints are written in the Greek philosophers word of God corruptions in that same passage as are being saved. Instead of heaven, written in the scriptures which were committed to the Jews in Genesis 1 and 1, the Greek philosophers who also interpreted the entire Old Testament from Hebrew into their Greek, with their word of God corruptions to heavens in Genesis 1 and 1, even before the heaven was divided in Genesis 1, 7 and 8. The Greek philosophers corrupted the word of God using the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world so bad that they changed numerous words in the scriptures that were committed to the Jews in both the Old and New Testament. Remember, the first church by Christ Jesus, born on the day of Pentecost in 38D, were Jews, Acts 2 and 5. Priests, Acts 6 and 7, and Levites, Acts 4, 36, Acts 13, 1, 2, 4, 49, who publish the word of God. It was the Greek philosophers, Acts 17, 18, who after the principles of the world and the traditions of men thought that the gospel that was preached by the apostle Paul was Babel. And they called him a babbler. The Greek philosophers mocked the resurrection of the dead 
Acts 17.32. And as their custom was to tell or hear some new thing, they came up with their own doctrine. Acts 17.19-21. The Greek philosophy is why in modern times, today, we have what's called universities, which is in their thought pattern, the unification of knowledge. Fraternities and sororities and all those Greek alpha to omega, gamma, this, beta, that, comes from Greek philosophy, which attempts to hear and tell some new thing even to this very day. The Apostle Paul warned the church that these folks were corrupting the word of God even before the book of Revelation was completed. And they told the church, the apostles, Paul, Peter, John, to beware of them to the point that the apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatians not to taste, touch, or handle their commandments and doctrines of men. Galatians 2, 8, 21, 22. Did the church by Jesus Christ listen to the apostles? No. Did the church by Jesus Christ listen to the apostle Paul when he told them not to touch, taste, or handle their commandments and doctrines of men? No. Nope. The scriptures say that the church in Asia turned away from Paul, which is the gospel he was preaching, as it is written in 2 Timothy 1.15. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelius and Hermogenes. Look at the names of the ringleaders who the apostle Paul pointed out, Pygelius and Hermogenes. Those are Greek names, mm -hmm. Greek philosophy. The philosophers used the same scriptures committed to the Jews and wrestled, twisted them to their own destruction. Written in 2 Timothy 2, 16 and 18. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doeth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. The Holy Ghost covered this as well, moving Paul to speak and pinpoint the names of these two men, Hymenaeus and Philetus. Those are not Jewish names. Those are Greek names. Again, Greek philosophy. The Greek philosophers are the actual ones that corrupted the word of God that was published by the Levite Jews. Acts 13.49 And the scriptures even pinpoint that one of the principal doctrines of Christ that they disputed with was the resurrection, which proves they did not just corrupt Old Testament scripture, rewriting instead of simply interpreting the Old Testament into Greek, no, but they rewrote New Testament scriptures because the New Testament scriptures specifically talk about the resurrection according to the scriptures as it is written in 1 Corinthians 15, 2 through 4. By which also ye are 
are saved. There go that are saved again. If ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But the church by Jesus Christ did not heed the warning in the first century, turning away from the apostle Paul in Asia. And Jesus Christ came to rebuke those in Asia who were not Jews that the oracles, scriptures of God were committed to in Revelation 2, 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. This corruption of the word of God by the Greek philosophers continued. Just like in the first century, the church by Jesus Christ was in Antioch, Syria, the Greek philosophers were based in Alexandria, Egypt. They wrote their corruptions and hid them away, believing that it was not a common salvation for the common man. When Jude 1 and 3 tells us it is. This philosophy passed down to the Roman Empire that hijacked the gospel and to this day call it Christianity. Which ain't nowhere in the scriptures. Jesus Christ ain't a Christian, he's a Jew. In fact, he's the king of the Jews who said in John 4, 22, you worship, but ye know not what? For we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Later, in the late third century, Origen of Alexandria took it upon himself to not just interpret the Hebrew, but to rewrite the word of God in places that did not agree with what? The rudiments of the world and the traditions of men. In the fourth century, Eusebius of Caesarea gave these word of God Alexandrian corruptions to the emperor Constantine so that the Catholic religion could have a Bible. In 382 AD, Pope Damascus of the Roman Catholic religion commissioned Jerome of Sinope to interpret those corrupted Greek scriptures into Latin, which he finished in 405 AD. The popes then ordered that no one except a priest could read their corrupted Bible. It was not until the Reformation of Martin Luther in the 16th century, which started on October 31st, 1517. And Luther took the Greek interpretation of the Antioch Syrian scriptures of the apostles of Jesus Christ and put them into the German language in 1522 AD in what is the New Testament, which was followed by William Tyndale that did the same thing, but in the English language for the New Testament in 1526 AD. The Hebrew and the Syriac Greeks, which were committed to the Levite Jews, have been in the mouths and ears 
of generations of men since they were written. With the Old Testament completed in 432 BC, before the Greeks invaded the land of Canaan, called at that time Israel and Judah, now referred to as Palestine from the Romans and Israel. And the same Levite Jews who had the scriptures in the New Testament, with proof being in the book of Hebrews and the book of Jude, which are Jewish names, which was completed in 96 AD. Those scriptures were with Jews in Mesopotamia and in Galilee and in the Armenian congregation, the Ethiopian congregation, and the Syrian congregation, among others. It was Europe that was in the dark. It was the European people that was in the dark. The very reason why they call their time period before the fall of Constantinople in 1453, when the Syrian Greek scriptures became known to them, they call that time period, all the way up to then, the Dark Ages. Because the Pope wouldn't let nobody read the scriptures. Even though those were Alexandrian Greek corrupted scriptures. And they still corrupt. Antioch scriptures that finally, after the fall of Constantinople, became known unto them and they were studied by the Catholic priest. William Tyndale, Catholic priest. Martin Luther, Catholic priest. Swingley, Catholic priest. All of them! But they got the Greek scriptures and Erasmus, the genius of all those Catholic priests, got the scriptures, learned the Greek, studied and lived in a Greek neighborhood in Vienna so he could get the dialogue and the inflections of the language of the Greek. And when he got the Greek scriptures, he said, these Greek scriptures from the Antioch Syriac church are streams of gold. And he put the Greek on one side and the Latin on the other side. So the other priests, because they were the only ones who could read the scriptures, were able to see, oh no, these are saying two different things. And the Alexandrians was disputing with Stephen because they were saying two different things. And it's still saying two different things to this day. Mm -hmm. After they started to read the scriptures and study them, then all of a sudden the Pope started seeing the frequency change, which led to the publication of the Hebrew scriptures by Daniel Bomberg, publishing the Mikarat Gidilat in Hebrew, the great scriptures first in 1517 AD and later in 1524 AD, primarily under the sponsorship of the Pope. Because mm -hmm. the Pope was like, oh no, these uh, Protestants ain't gonna know more than me. This is when the scriptures of Moses, the prophets and the apostles became known to Europe. But the Armenian congregation the Ethiopian congregation, the Syrian congregation, and other nations had the Holy Scriptures in their mouths as prophesied in Isaiah 59, 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, said the Lord from henceforth and forever. From henceforth and forever. Isaiah was moved by the Holy Ghost and he spake and this was written down in 711 BC. And from henceforth and forever, mankind and all the generations have had the words of God, but Europe did not. They was in the dark ages. Mm -hmm. Therefore, with the Reformation, the scriptures which were committed to the Jews were available finally 
in Europe. English, which at the height of its language in the early 17th century Jacobean era was only spoken by 1% of the world. Yet, the complete interpretation of the Chaldean Syriac Semitic Oriental language called Hebrew and the Syriac Koine Greek was now in the English tongue as prophesied in Isaiah 28:11. The publication is the most known book on earth, the Holy Bible authorized by King James, first printed in 1611 AD. The devil and his false prophet, the Pope, deliberately use every tactic to turn the people from the Holy Bible to the bureaucracy of the Pope. But it didn't work. The English spread all over the world, taking the Holy Bible with them, until the language of English today is spoken by 25% of the people on earth and growing. It is the language of trade and commerce, and it is spoken everywhere on earth. God knew it, and he put it in Isaiah 28, 11. The Creator knew this would happen so that the gospel would be preached to every creature written in Mark 16, 15. The Pope, with his Jesuit army, planned for centuries to change this. And finally, in Chiria, Italy, the Jesuits came up with a plan. If you can't beat them, join them. In other words, the Pope wanting his control back over the people and over the Bible that they were believing decided that if the people want a Bible, I'll give them a Bible. My Bible that I hid from them for centuries. The corrupted Greek philosophy Alexandrian text. But I'll give them so many Bibles that it'll be coming out of their noses and out of their ears. And in 1881 AD, it finally happened. The Revised Standard Version of the Alexandrian Greek corruptions that goes all the way back to the first century Greek philosophies and philosophers was unleashed on the world. And today, we have all these hundreds of Greek Word of God corruptions interpreted into the English language spread all over the earth. The question is this. Why? Why so many Bible versions? Satan is using the Vatican and the UBS, the United Bible Society, to play the short and long game. The short game is to seduce the people into believing that this is the same book of the authorized Holy Bible just using different modern words. The same book. He lied saying they using the same manuscripts. The same book, but he lied because it's not the same manuscripts or the words that the apostles and the Levi Jews had in the first century or interpreted into the 17th century Jacobean era English. But there is a long game also, which leads to this next question. What do all these English Bible versions have to do with the coming mark of the beast? The Vatican has supervised the manuscripts of the Alexandrian text that are used 
in all the English Bible versions except for one. Which one? The Holy Bible authorized by King James. We all the others, they supervise and got their paws on them. For what reason? For the coming events in time, starting with Daniel's 70th week, which will usher in the beginning of sorrows and the eventual time of Jacob's trouble, told to us by Jesus Christ as great tribulation, which was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Matthew. 24, 21. Satan and his messengers, ministers, and false apostles are playing the long game with these multitude of English Bible virgins because they know the mark of the beast is coming. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. When the mark of the beast comes, anyone that takes it will be cast into the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone once they die forever. But folks will be desperate to take this mark because they will not be able to eat without it. They can't buy and sell. So they can't eat, which is the bottom line. However, after the church has been taken away with Christ Jesus, the dead in Christ rise first, and we that are born again, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with new tongues, living in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life, being caught up with Jesus Christ and ever be with the Lord, there's going to be a remnant of folks here still left. And those rim will refuse to take the mark for them and their children, knowing that it means damnation. But their parents, other family members, and friends will treat them as being irresponsible and even jeopardizing the health and welfare of their own children and themselves, who they will report to the authorities betraying them, just like Jesus Christ told us in Matthew 24, 9 through 10. The main complaint and argument that the parents, family members, and friends who portray these souls will use will be this. Who told you that taking the mark of the beast would send anyone into the lake of fire and brimstone? Where did you get that from? The person and persons refusing to take the mark of the beast for themselves and their children will say, I got it from the Holy Bible. This is where Satan, his messengers, ministers, and false apostles long game of having all these English Bible versions today will come into play and make sense as to why the Pope and Vatican, who are against any Bible, supervised and agreed with the UBS to put all those issues and English versions out into publication. Because the parents, during the time of the beast and his mark, and family members and friends will then say to those souls refusing to take the mark of the beast, which Bible? Mm. This is when the parents, family members, and friends will say, even in the old days, before all of this, my own pastor told us that all Bibles are flawed. They will say, even folks who studied the scriptures and other ancient languages all their lives with their doctrine of divinity, THDs and PhDs 
used to tell everybody that there is no perfect Bible and that no one has God's perfect word and that God's word has been lost for millennials and that the revised English versions are only a fraction of God's word in our possession. This is what Satan knew back in 1881 AD and what he set in motion for the destruction of mankind for the future mark of the beast. First, he tried to darken it out with the dark ages and had the Pope tell you everything that's supposed to have been happening with him and God and the people, making up fables. But then the scriptures got to Europe because Europe had to spread this all over the earth. That's God's plan, because it's here right now. The Holy Scriptures are powerful and soul-saving, but only when they are reliable. It is the tradition of men and such like things that is the only thing on earth that make the word of God of none effect, which the Greek philosophers knew and they used this starting way back in the first century after reading the scriptures. As it is written in Mark 7, 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. What is the apostle Paul warned the church of? That they would use what? The traditions of men. And what was the like things? The rudiments of the world. Satan knows if you make mankind not believe that the scriptures are reliable, that their faith in that book of the Lord shatters. And the only thing that will matter to the flesh is the here and now, and not the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen, which is faith in Hebrews 11. Because they will not have faith in the Holy Bible when the pressure is put on them. What pressure is that? Take this mark or die. You can't eat unless you take the mark. That's the pressure that's coming. The folks don't even believe the word of God now. Lord have mercy. This is why they put out all these English versions to confuse you. The Pope's shell game of deception. The sad truth is that they don't have faith in the Holy Scriptures now. While these things are in a green tree, when the Great Tribulation comes with the mark of the beast, mankind is going to be in the dry. All the years of overseers telling folks that all Bibles are flawed and that there is no perfect Bible is actually what Satan has convinced these overseers to vomit out in his long game of planting the wicked seed that will bruise the seed of the woman's heel, the elect of God. That's why Many a call, few will be chosen. When the pressure is on folks to take the mark of the beast so they can eat, and the soul refusing to take the mark of the beast, not letting their children take it, will become enemies of society and be accused of starving their own children for a series of unreliable book versions that recorded audio and video will show that even the experts of religion and the overseers who were the stewards of the churches they attended and supported all agree that every version is flawed. But we got all these different versions, so take your pick of your flawed, damnable heresy. These are the lies from the devil 
in these English Revised Versions, and they got many others in all the other languages, because remember, the Vatican supervises all of those Alexandrian texts. The entire long range purpose for all these English Version Bibles is going to be revealed starting in the beginning of sorrows, which will lead to the Great Tribulation, because nobody will trust the scriptures and will believe that they are corruptions of man's making, which the Alexandrian text is, but the Antioch Greek and the Hebrew is not. Why? Because the Levites had it. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the book of the Lord because the oracle scriptures committed to the Jews tell us plainly in 2 Corinthians 13, 8, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The scriptures that committed, delivered to the Levites says in Psalms 85 and 11, truth shall spring forth from the earth and Righteousness shall look down from heaven. So using the truth, watch, watch, watch Satan's lie collapse right in front of you. This is the truth of the gospel. Satan, his messengers, his ministers, and the false apostles' position is one. No one has the original manuscripts. Two, they have to find and piece together the manuscripts that are left. Three, the older the manuscript, the closer it is to the original autographs, therefore it is the most reliable. But because it is not the original, it is flawed too. But what does the whole scriptures that were committed to the Levite Jews say, A, the Holy Scriptures never told anybody we would have the original manuscripts. God knew the original manuscripts wouldn't be here. They done disintegrated in the dust. But the copies are here. Mm -hmm. That's why God commanded mankind to make copies, Deuteronomy 17, 18. And the Creator will preserve the copies, Psalms 12, 6, and 7. Just like when the king, Jehoiakim, destroyed the original manuscripts of Jeremiah, and the Creator told Jeremiah to take another row and write in that book and even add more words than what were in the original manuscript, which is what we have right now today in the book of Jeremiah, preserved by God to this day. Deuteronomy 17, 18, Jeremiah 36, 28 through 32. That destroys Satan's lie that only the original manuscripts are inspired by God. B, the Creator never told us that the scriptures would be lost and that we would have to find bits and pieces in graveyards and deserts and in Vatican libraries and in Greek monasteries and put together what was left. The Creator told us by the scriptures delivered to the Levites, published by the Levite Jews, that his word would be in our mouth and in our seed's mouth and in our seed's seed's mouth forever, Isaiah 59, 21. Don't nobody got to dig up nothing. Hallelujah. Mankind has always had God's written words since 1406 BC in the Bronze Age when God had Moses write the law. The copies were made by mankind even until this very day. 
in 96 AD. The New Testament was finished by folks that spoke Syriac, Aramaic, from Aram, son of Shem, Genesis 10, 22, whose country became Padan Aram, and whose people were called Syrians, Genesis 28 and 5. This is preserved in another tongue other than Hebrew, just like the scriptures prophesied in Isaiah 28, 11, written into the Koine Greek language. Mankind has had those same scriptures in thousands of copies in the Armenian congregation, the Ethiopian congregation, the Syrian congregations for millennium among some other folks who were never part of the Catholic religion in their dark ages. The Catholic religion, which the Roman Empire adapted, never had those scriptures, but had the Greek philosophy corruptions that the Apostle Paul warned the church about in 2 Corinthians 2.17. The scriptures they have are Greek, based in Alexandria, Egypt, from Origins, fifth column, Hexapla, and other philosopher editions. Those scriptures were given to Constantine in 331 AD, and Pope Damascus commissioned Jerome a Chanel to interpret those into Latin in 382 AD, which he finished in 405. AD. But the scriptures of the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, and the apostles, which we believe on Jesus Christ through their word, John 17, 20, have always been in the possession of mankind and were never lost. Which is why the New Testament scriptures are called the majority text, because the Armenians, the Ethiopians, the Syrians, have always had them. It was just the Europeans that was in the Dark Ages and portions of Far East Asia and in the New World. The very fact that men had to find scriptures in caves in 1947 AD in the Vatican Library on shelf 1209 in 1475 AD, and in Greek monasteries in 1844 AD, and again in 1859 AD, as well as fragments dug up out of the ground claimed by Chester Beatty, Bodmer, and in regions of Nagamadi and other Egyptian sites in the late 19th to late 20th century, some even today, proves something without a shadow of doubt that anybody that knows and understands the English tongue will know this, that those scriptures were not in anybody's mouths or their seeds' mouths, or their seed seeds mouths. But the Holy Scriptures have been in the mouths of the people and their seeds mouths and their seed seeds mouths since the Isaiah prophecy in 711 BC into the New Testament until this very day. So those manuscripts that were hidden are not God's words. And those are the very manuscripts in all the English Virgin Bibles, except for one, the Holy Bible authorized by King James. See, the Creator does not base His Holy Word on the age of the manuscript. The Creator tells us that His Holy Word would be the copies that were delivered to the Levites in the First Testament and published by the Levites in the New Testament, called Jews. The scriptures were first delivered to the Levites in the Old Testament in Moab 
1406 BC for them to copy. Deuteronomy 31 9, 24 through 26. The Levites became Jews when the kingdom of Israel was divided into Israel and Judah by King Jeroboam, the son of Nathat, that caused Israel to sin in 931 BC, 2 Chronicles 11, 14. The Levites are the scribes that copy the scriptures as God commanded, 2 Chronicles 34, 13. In the New Testament, the priests, Levites, became obedient to the faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ, following the apostles' doctrine and copied the scriptures. Barnabas, the apostle of Christ Jesus, Acts 14, 14, was a Levite, Acts 4, 36, along with his nephew Mark, who wrote from what the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, the book of Mark, Galatians 14. Publish the word of God in all the region, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, Acts 1 and 8. Because the oracles, hey, hallelujah, Jesus Christ, which are the scriptures of God were committed to the Jews, the Levites. Romans 3, 1 and 2. And nobody else. It don't matter how old your manuscripts are. It can have fingerprints of the first Alexandrians while Jesus was still on the cross. But they wasn't the Jews. And the scriptures were committed only to the Jews. The Levites. Nobody else. If the Levites didn't have your scriptures, then you ain't got the word of God. Because the Levites are the Jews that were committed the oracles, scriptures of God. No body else. They made the copies. Nobody else. Whatever you was copied from, from anybody else, whether it be the Masoretics, Tyndale, or the King James Scholars, they had to copy what the Levite Jews had and nobody else. Greek philosophers, they don't count. Origin don't count. None of that garbage counts. Jerome don't count. Dead works. God got no record of it. Corruptions. So if Greeks wrote your Bible, then you ain't got God's word. And if the Greek manuscripts in the Old and New Testaments of the English Bible versions that are out in circulation is what you got, you ain't got God's word. And the English versions got all of those Old and New Testament Alexander manuscripts in them. Except for one. The Holy Bible authorized by King James. Look it up. It's not how old the manuscripts are. The Greek manuscripts are old because nobody used them. The Vatican hid them away from the people and they in pristine order right now, put on shelves and hid and it was handed to Constantine from the St. Catherine's Monastery in a velvet cloth. That's how well they preserved it and hid it from everybody. That wasn't in nobody's C's mouth, for they C's mouth, for they C's C's mouth. So that ain't God's word. Uh-huh. Hidden in those locations until it was time to unleash them on the world, which they did in 1881 AD. There's only one book of the Lord. There's only one complete English interpretation of the book of the Lord. The Holy Bible authorized by King James. How do we know? Because in the King James Bible, 
It is the interpretation and the preservation of the Hebrew and Syriac Greek that the Levite Jews had. This is why, to this day, Satan, his messengers, ministers, and false apostles hate the authorized Holy Bible. They hate the Holy Bible authorized by King James. They ban it in most of their theological institutions for study. But in doing this, they have made the Holy Bible authorized by King James stick out like a sore thumb with folks with and even those without the Holy Ghost asking, why aren't you all using the King James Bible? And it is their very answers that expose Satan's plans as to why they don't use the Holy Bible authorized by King James because they ain't studying in those theological institutions, Bible seminaries, or Bible colleges the word of the living God. They're studying the Alexandrian corrupted Greek philosophers word that they made up and put it into scripture form with book, chapter, and verses. All so the people can be confused. So the overseers can be confused. And they set out an agenda of making them believe a false premise of only the originals are inspired and that you have to dig up God's word because nobody has it. And because the older the manuscript, the closer it is to the original autograph. And that's what makes it more reliable. When God himself in the written scriptures ain't never said that was God's word. He said it would be what the Levite Jews were delivered and what were committed to them, which is only in the authorized Holy Bible, first printed in 1611 AD in the English tongue, which has always been here. The English and the rest of Europe just didn't have it. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. And amen.